Howdy Heroes Hearth, I am Kyle Ferguson, and I'm sitting down with BBJ to talk about Brightwing. BBJ, you are known for this hero, now playing for 30k in the CCL. We're going to be watching a match from the recent Icebreakers Finals versus Crowd Control. Why Brightwing all the time? Uh, I think she got some wild buffs while uh, I was gone, and I came back and looked at the hero's you know numbers and seemed kind of insane that she has a z that you can lower the cooldown of it pretty quickly off minions and then it's healing for 35 percent of uh, max hp which is really nice because we see a lot of like tank killing recently so it's very nice to not have to you know spam 15 ana heals into your tank instead you just press your z button yeah you really favor the cooldown. the hyper shift yeah, I think Hyper Shift at 1 is a, a must pick. I think it's a insane talent, bringing your heal up from 25 to 35% max HP, and the cooldown can get, like, so low. On BOE, not, you know, the most minion waves available, but if you, you know, if there's a double wave stacked up, you can Z someone, walk to that wave, and basically have it up instantly as soon as the wave dies. That's one of my first questions, is your draft here. As a Storm League player, Diablo seems like it's a scary place for a bright wing healer. Is this just coordinated enough? Do you trust that Z so much Diablo's fine? What what's different now from the usual anger that is experienced in Storm League with a bright wing? Uh, I mean, yeah, I really like Diablo with bright wing to be honest, because I think uh, the percent health obviously on him out of all the tanks gets the most value besides I don't know stitches maybe, but. Especially at uh, 13, you can get an increased healing talent as well. I don't believe I go with this game, but it can increase your Z heal to like 51 or 61% max HP or something, and you can just get insane value. So as long as they don't have, you know, instant kill on him, you're pretty much always going to get your Z off to save him. And uh, yeah, it's better than him walking around eating all my Decker potions for like five minutes if he gets low. <laughs> Is, uh, what else about this team changes the way you play Brightwing? Uh, so I have the Genji that like Zing in on is a uh, very nice, but I don't really heal him at all until I'm level 10, which is why you'll see our early game. We kind of just are waiting because in fights with a Genji, I can Z to him, but then that's pretty much all I can do. And it's not that big of a heal on a Genji until like level seven when I start giving him a shield along with it. But then once I hit 10, I can blink heal with him. He can get on the target. I can blink in polymorph to help him land his damage and keep them, you know, in place a little longer. And then I can blink heal out if I need to or keep running them down. Gotcha. And so then... the percent based healing is safe for Diablo, but when we get to Peekaboo, you're going to be able to use it on Genji. Yeah, then I'm, I'm able to enable, you know, my backliners or my like less high health pool targets better. And then once 10's online, then I can actually heal things, you know, without a huge cooldown or just my little puny AOE heals. What about the enemy team? Is there a priority polymorph target or anything special you're doing as Brightwing looking at that enemy side? Uh, so Imperius is always nice. If he spears, I can poly and it drops his spear, right? Makes the hero feel pretty bad whenever his spear gets interrupted. Uh, and then Li Ming, if she's you know trying to nano boost, spam her E button on all my teammates, I can make sure to polymorph her to at least, you know, take a second and a half off of that nano boosted insaneness. Uh, and then besides that, uh, sometimes, you know, if there's a CC chain on the blaze, I can get a polymorph off to maybe stop a bunker. But it's pretty much whatever my team's hitting, I generally want to be polymorphing to either set up their CC, my teammate's CC easier or, you know, deny the enemy team an escape. Now here you've gone at level four unstable anomaly, and that seems to be one of the more popular picks, but I think it's thought about wrong because when we see it, we think, oh, 2% giant killer, Brightwing level two, that... That must be good. What? Yeah, the the two percent is not huge, right? Okay. On some tanks, maybe it's doing I don't know a hundred HP on like a full souls Diablo at certain points of the game. But the real thing is that it's a. Uh, I think a lot of people look at it and they read it and they think it's a fifteen percent increase on your slow. But the way I look at it is it's a fifty percent increase on your slow because you're going from thirty percent to forty five percent, and so you're you know one point five. You have one hundred fifty percent slow essentially compared to what your baseline slow is. And it really helps set up like your other CCs, right? Because you have the point and click CC, you can always land yours. And then once yours is down, you can set up your teammates who have, you know, the skill shots and the hard buttons to hit. And that range is 
pretty, pretty short without the bonus talent. So you're definitely in the thick of it, bouncing around everybody. Yeah. That's why, uh, that's why I like Blinky a lot, so that I can, uh, you know, kind of dive in, dive out, dash around. In these and, fights, uh, do you tend to favor using your E Pixie Dust on yourself to make those positionings before ten, or is there something you're looking for on the enemy side? Uh, generally, I mean, this game I'm looking for main combos or anybody that gets imp speared on my team. I think uh, Masquerade has his uh, soul shield at one on Diablo's game, so I try not to em whenever he's going to use that because it doesn't stack, right? Sure. You don't want to overlap. Uh, but other than that, I'm pretty much just saving it for whoever is trying to get reset on by the Ming, because if, if I deny the Ming reset, I feel like most of these fights should go pretty well for us. So you actually have, yeah, there's that polymorph you were talking about. So you actually have three answers to Imperius then. You've got the Pixie Dust for your ally, a Polymorph to stop the Imperius stun early, which might interrupt a Flash of Anger if we go that way. And then you also have the Soothing Mist. Is that useful yeah. in that situation or are you saving it for something else? Uh, I mean, on their team, I'm either looking at Imperius Spear if it hits more than one person, right? If it's only on one person, generally I'll just Polymorph him or use my E. But if it hits multiple, then I'll probably look to cleanse it. Uh, if I don't have Polymorph up, right? Because Polymorph kind of does the same thing, dropping stun on both. Uh, but the Hanzo arrow is the big thing I'm looking at this game uh, after level 10. Because a big Hanzo arrow can just win a game, right? So I try to hold my uh, AoE cleanse for it because it can really swing a fight if he hits a huge arrow and then I cleanse it and they kind of overextend, assuming the arrow will last. Interrupting the entire team and you're not a part of that ideally, so you can cleanse them out. Yeah, post 10, I... I sometimes try to stand back so that I can, you know, if an arrow hits, I blink heal in and then Soothing Mist, but I don't do a great job of it, to be honest. I'm generally in the thick of it. I mean, you gotta be on top of them to heal them in the first place, and the polymorph range is limited, so it makes sense why that would be quite the juggle to perform. In this situation, we talked about Peekaboo already, but is there anything else that comes to mind outside of just shielding Genji here? Uh, I mean, on this map, there's a lot of bushes, right? They have like mm. an Imperious Ming. They have a Blaze Charge. They have a lot of scary one-shot potential out if we face check a bush. So at points in this game, I will use it just for the vision, right? The vision five seconds is a long time to reveal like a pretty sizable area of the map. So sometimes, you know, if your team is face checking something, you can save them preemptively by just getting the vision control for your team. For Storm League players, is there any reason why Brightwing would soak bottom during this objective defense? Uh, so, well, sometimes it depends, right? I mean, if no one's in a lane and you're Brightwing and you're Z's up, you probably just go soak it because no one else is going to. But uh, I mean, it's basically just based around your Z cooldown, right? Sometimes you can, like if there's 20 seconds, sometimes I'll go to a wave because as soon as the wave dies, based uh, off my level one, I'll get cooldown back up. Uh, and even sometimes like, if we have kill pressure on their off laner, say their off laner is, you know, something squishy and me and Yurel can kill it. Maybe I'd start down bot lane, look for a kill on their off laner, and then Z back up to my team if it doesn't work out. Makes perfect sense. Do you prioritize Brightwing's auto attacks at all, or do you just let other people and you worry about your positioning? Uh, I generally try to get as many autos as I can, but against this team, you know, every time I'm autoing, I'm kind of standing still for that little bit, which can be pretty scary against a uh, an Ana and a Ming and an Imp. This is actually an interesting moment just in this game in general. And Diablo, from our above view, dove in into a rather dangerous situation. Did you guys not see the enemy side? Uh, I think, <laughs> sounds bad, but we were kind of bored. <laughs> we had been sitting still for a long time this game. And yeah. we had kind of, I think, not fought as much as we wanted the game before. And I think, uh, I didn't think they would kill our Diablo as well as they did early game, right? I thought they would need maybe the level 10s uh, or even some later talents from like their Imperius and stuff to, uh, really punish him, especially because I get, you know, I made sure I got the Z after the Ana grenade, so I got the full healing on him. But, uh, yeah, they're still able to kill him, but it was more fun. If we, <laughs> I mean, uh, Diablo has still. buttons that go in. You can't, you can't not yeah. press them. Did you, that's an interesting note about the Ana grenade. Uh, there was a recent balance change here where they decreased the duration. Do you feel like that helped you out or is Ana still just trouble? Uh, I think, because now it's down to like 1.75, I believe, yeah. if you don't take any talents into it. So if she uses it reactionary, then she should still cancel it because your Brightwing Z is two seconds, right? Mm. So assuming she waits the 0.25 and then she nades it, then she should decrease the healing. But if she uses it before the Z comes out, 
like once you see it, then you can see someone pretty much right away because by the time your Z comes through, the healing reduction will worn off. And right now you're kind of hi hiding around in lane, seeing if you can grab a couple minions to... Or yeah, just try to get close to level 10. Okay, this is this is purely XP right now oriented. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think my Z's up, I assume, but I don't even think I Z in here because we're just trying to play for 10. And then I think by the time we get 10, Punisher's kind of already dead and we just don't have an angle. So uh, for but, aspiring uh, Brightwing players, we're watching your camera right now. We see that you're looking at your lane, but are your eyes glued to the mini map? How are you managing the Z? Uh, yeah, generally I'm looking at... I mean, I'm trusting my teammates a little bit, but if they really go in, they'll tell me, and that'll see them in time. But uh, generally, I'm, when I'm looking at the lane, generally I only uh, am looking to like make sure my Q gets off, and then I kind of look away once I'm just autoing whatever matters. And then I start looking around to see what my teammates are doing. You got that blink heal, and you've mentioned that it's all about the positioning, getting around. You got that Imperius to worry about. You got a lot of poke on the enemy side. Is there anything else that blink heal now makes you capable of? Uh, it also enables you, you it enables you to soak better, right? It's uh, kind of riskier, right? Because I can be kind of far out, and then I can blink back to a minion if I try to get if they try to gank me. It just allows uh, you to be a lot more versatile in pretty much everything, right? Because I can I don't have to walk up to my allies to uh, use my soothing mist. I can walk up and I can blink in and cleanse them. I can do a, just a lot of things better than if I had like you know Emerald Wind. Is there anything, like, Lunara always tries to hold on to two charges so she can do the jump in, jump out. Is there anything about holding on to two charges with Brightwing that makes it better? Uh, yeah, I mean, generally you don't want to waste charges, right? If you can, uh, sometimes I'll, I'll generally hold on to one if I'm just passively healing people. Uh, but then in fights, at the start of the fight, you definitely want two so you can go in a little bit and then also have the ability to go out. Cool. So like here, Genji's hanging out with a little bit of low health, but not really a concern because we still want that mobility for the upcoming fight. Yeah. And by the time, you know, if he actually starts fighting, I'll be able to blink heal in on him ideally and get the, uh, the heal on him there anyway. Any advice for helping people hit their arcane flares? Uh, practice, I guess? I <laughs> just know. just I hit think, them. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's fair. Whenever you poly, you should definitely throw out a Q with it, right? Because they're 45% slowed if you have the level 4. So it's very easy to hit that center. And it provides, you know, the 2% max health is a must, but much, but in combination with a, you know, a center of your Arcane Flare, it's not bad damage. So you favor definitely the Hyper Shift, but the greater Polymorph is sworn by so many people, and it does that exact thing you just talked about, hitting Arcane Flare within the Polymorph. Is there ever a world where you would take that? Uh, I don't think I don't think you can give up Hyper Shift. I think the talent is uh, too good. I think it's too insane for what it gives you. Because it not only gives you increased healing on your Z, but also just more globals throughout the game. And your Z is so strong. I think uh, there was a time where Greater Polymorph was really insane. I think uh, it used to give you a full reset on your Polymorph every time you got a kill. And if that was how the talent still read, I'd definitely take it. Even if Hyper shift was how it is, because I think, uh, you know, having reset potential for just more kills is always how I like to play. But I think right now, hyper shift's too good to give up. What about Emerald Wind, the heroic we didn't take here? Uh, I've taken Emerald Wind a few games, but it just feels like you lack the extra bit of target healing that you need that Blink Heal kind of provides. Because you have your Z, but if you're not near a minion wave, you're getting like one of those off a fight. And then you just have your AOE healing, and Emerald Wind doesn't like increase your passive healing like it used to mm. at one point. So now it, it just feels like you're not as good at protecting your backline without the blink heal. Tell me a little bit about 13 here. And it's probably the most depends tier. Yeah, this is probably the talent I change up the most out of my games. She has like uh, three very good options. One that kind of just gets overshadowed by the other two in Pixie Boost, because 40% move speed's a lot, but it decays back down to its normal 20% over time, so it's just not that great of a talent. But uh, Safety Dust and Pixie Power are both really strong. Uh, this game I went Pixie Power because against, you know, a nano-boosted Li Ming, 55 spell armor on a 9 second cooldown can really do a lot to shut it down. But there are definitely games where I go Safety Dust for the uh, increased healing and an extra second on your spell armor is pretty nice. 
interesting. So the, the pop potential of Li Ming being fast means that safety dust is still viable, but since you're gonna catch it anyway, might as well do the pixie power. Yeah. And having the lower cooldown allows me to, you know, maybe get two off during a fight where I would only get one and maybe it, you know, saves a reset here or there. Sure. But uh, I definitely like, if they don't have a lot of spell power, safety dust can be really insane, especially if you get a uh, an E maybe on a frontliner and then you back off a bit and get a Z channel on them and you heal them just for, you know, I mean, you're almost like two ancestral heals on a frontliner. It's right, because you're, you're taking the duration to what now? Four seconds. Four seconds, so you can yeah. Back off, and you can get the uh, like the full two second channel on your Z off pretty reliably. Right, you got plenty of wiggle room. You could even throw a couple blink heals in there if you really, really needed to afterwards. Yeah. Interesting. And the E still, you know, increases your blink heal and your passive AOE heal, which helps. You know, it's nice. It's not game changing, but it's definitely nice. So right now you're all all eyes on the Diablo helping him make the picks that he's making. Otherwise, is there anything else? Ooh, nice dodge. Anything else you guys are thinking about? Uh, no, I was just watching Masquerade as he was bullying Lauber, and then uh, I was telling him, because he was tanking the fort, I was telling him that, you know, he can keep tanking, he's fine, I have a Z on him. I was kind of just watching his health bar, and then once it got, you know, around that 35% HP range or whatever, I can get the full Z value on him, and he can just keep tanking that fort. And right now we're kind of in that same situation where, sure, Vespertine is down a little bit of health, but we're holding on to two charges for all the wiggle room that might happen. Yeah, in case, like, Masquerade is looking for, like, a APOC combo on, like, a Hanzo or something there. If he hits that, I can blink in, poly, make our CC chain a little longer, and then I can blink out if they start focusing me. So you're now entirely sitting on top of the group. Is there any reason why Brightwing would split off in this game state? Uh, generally not, right? Splitting helps a lot if you're uh, even and trying to get the lead or if you're behind and trying to catch up. But if you're ahead and, you know, there's nowhere safe to get free XP, then generally you just stick with your boys, you know, make sure that there's faith. And I mean, you can still get big Z value even when you're not using it for that much, you know, distance traveled, right? Just the heal is so big. 16 is a really cool level. It makes sense completely with the targeting, with the Diablo, with everything you've been doing so far, that Critter Eyes would be the pick, but any reasons beyond the Diablo why you might favor that here? Uh, I think Critter Eyes, I mean, it's a 25% Voln for, uh, I think, 1.5 seconds, right? That's how long that button whip is, I believe. Yeah. I mean, that's, like, pretty decent for a 25 armor shred. And, uh, I mean, it's all about getting one kill in a competitive a lot of times is you get one and then the other time teams either in a position where they have to back off or if they keep fighting then you know you win the 4v5 pretty easily or 5v4 rather uh there's some times where hush is a a pretty good pickup right having another form of cc on a different ability can be really nice against like heroes you need a lot of interrupts against like you know if your team lacks mosh interrupts then you take hush now you have a polymorph or a arcane flare they can both interrupt it but most games, I go Critter Eyes because, you know, the difference between getting a kill and not getting a kill can be massive. Is there any world where phase out happens or are things so bad at that point? Might as well try for the kill stuff. Uh, I've had a few phase out games, but I think generally it's only if you're under like a ton of point and click threat, right? Uh, like if you blink heal in and they instantly like Zul root you or something, right? You can phase out to cleanse the root off you and that can be pretty nice. But generally, I don't find myself in that much danger. Maybe with Emerald Wind, if I didn't have the extra mobility, it'd be nice to, you know, I could phase shift in Emerald Wind, and then if they turn on me, I can phase out to dodge some damage. Oh, that's an interesting thought. I didn't think of it as a cleanse, but I guess Brightwing's also sporting, now with Gladiator's Medallion, a number of ways to deal with things, so maybe phase out has lost that edge. Yeah. So, so yeah, because now you can self-cleanse, you can... I mean, you can uh, do some tricky things with the Soothing Mist to kind of, like, self-cleanse. Like, if a Murrah Stormbolt is coming at you, you can preemptively Soothing Mist, and if you time it right, you'll instantly self-cleanse the stun. Oh, so, like, here I see the Genji just for uh, some vision, right? Because that bush was scary, and I wanted to kind of get eyes on where their Ana's at, and it allows my Genji to kind of play more aggressive. And then, for the rest of the fight, I'm kind of just hitting Lauber, <laughs> waiting for them to really start hitting some stuff. 
auto attacking, but everyone's staying pretty safe, high health at least, and you yeah. got your Diablo and then here, there. I see the Ming blink in with Nano, so I just poly to stop, you know, any potential resets, and then Sammy 1v9s pretty easily. Interesting. Uh, that, I think, is one of your first self casts of Pixie in the whole game. Do you have a hard and fast rule for people who like to self cast that for movement? Uh, I mean, the movement's definitely nice, right? If I'm in a, like, if my whole team's rotating and I want to catch up without using my Z, you know, I can use it to be like kind of a pseudo few second mount because it definitely feels bad. But after 10, generally, I just use the blink heal for uh, any kind of traveling I need to do. And the E is generally just for the spell armor and a bit of the movement speed, but mostly it's spell armor. Now you guys are going to end the game here, and congratulations on that victory. What about 20? Since we uh, won't get to the, see it. The level 20 blink heal is bonkers. It is uh, every time you use it, you stealth not only yourself, but also your ally. And they become like un... Uh, what's the word? Un... Revealable? It's something else in the game, I think. But basically, they can't be revealed for like that extra, I don't know, second or so. So it, against auto attack heavy comps or anybody with like point and click abilities, it can really shut them down. Interesting. So not so much gauged on the fact that there's like a heal over time or that whole, you know, standing still becoming unrevealed. It's merely that it really interrupts people who have to right click. Yeah, it's not only the right clicks, but like say, uh, a lot of the times, a lot of the engage tools are kind of skill shots, right? And then people get finished off by either auto attacks or maybe some point and click abilities. Whereas if you can like kind of interrupt their chain of, you know, CC, it can save them for a lot more than just like the kind of weak heal over time does. In that game, you were up against the Hanzo and the Li Ming. So would you have gone Fairy Protector? Mm, no, I don't think I ever. I think the only time you would not go... The Blinky at level 20 is if you want Emerald Wind. And then I think the Emerald Wind upgrades slightly weaker than the Blinky one. It's still pickable at times, but I think then maybe you go Fairy Protector for kind of the AoE protection and the AoE move speed, kind of like a mini, you know, Lucio speed speed up. So are we throwing shade at Speedy Dragon? Not not viable, not going to take it? I tried to get June to pick it on stream last night because I wanted to see it. I have never seen it. I have never picked it. And uh, I just don't think... It can never be that good, right? Because it's just, if it was 30% and you're a permanent mount, maybe it's insane. You can, you know, juke everything. But I think the others are too good to give up. Awesome. Well, this was a great rundown. Any other advice for aspiring, and certainly there are a lot of them, right wing players? Make sure you figure out who your carry is and then Z them. You know, don't go wasting your your big ancestral plus shield on somebody who's going to run it down and waste it. You know, got to be picky. Awesome. Well, thank you for your time. Good luck in your upcoming matches. And of course, everybody cheer for BBJ and the 30K team in the nope. Heroes Thanks. Hearth CCL. Don't forget to like Thanks and subscribe. Yeah. <laughs> Don't forget to like and subscribe here at Heroes Hearth for more videos. Ring that bell as well. And we'll see you next week.